Hey, what's up? There's a question that everybody asks all the time, and the answer to it puzzles so many people. You know, some people don't have a choice. They've only got two or three lenses, so that makes the decision easy. Or they're thinking about buying a lens, but it's like, prime or zoom, prime or zoom. You have to ask yourself the question, what is it you're planning on doing? What is it that you're going to be shooting mostly? It's like, well, I shoot everything. Well, <coughs> that kind of makes the decision a little harder, but not really. Here's the issue, prime versus zoom. Like, here I got a 24mm f1.8. This lens is the tits. Um, same is true of the Nikkor 20mm 1.8G, which is just untouchable. It sits at a mountaintop, and all of the 20mm are just circling its fanny way, way below. Uh, you know, Zeiss Distagon 35mm f2. Nikkor 35mm f2, which is actually a cheap lens at like $190 used. That lens is still made for a reason. The, the, uh, the bitch of, uh, you know, incredible primes is that you're always uh, screwed when it comes to uh, trading perfection for flexibility. What? Zooms, you know, flexibility. Perfection, if I had to zoom over here, flexibility. Perfection versus flexibility. The general truth of the matter is that uh, when the crap is still, portraits, landscape, streets, I know stuff moves in streets, city, cityscapes, you know, stick with perfection. Um, obviously things are changing, you want to frame them differently, still, in that situation, stick with perfection. When distance is like my weekend shoot, when I did a three-day shoot, people were complaining to me, they said, oh, you're all the time talking about prime lenses and you brought a bunch of zooms. Well, the reason I brought, I did bring one prime lens, the 60 millimeter, but the reason I brought all those zoom lenses is that the distances and the crowd is constantly changing, and you you got to blast it fast with flexibility. People are moving and zooming in left and right. I have to be able to zoom with it. Yeah, I know I can zoom with my feet. And you can zoom with your feet. Well, when you're in a crowded place, it, you know, you, you know, you got a table here and a bunch of people behind you. you. Can't zoom with your feet. So that's the reason I brought a bunch of zooms. So perfection versus flexibility. That's my golden rule of lenses. Um, however, it is the case. Uh, usually is the case that uh, with perfection, for example, let's take this lens, for example, or the 20mm, or a Zeiss Distagon, or some other uh, epic god lens that's just incredible, you can crop a perfection down as if it were a zoom, and still maintain, depending, maintain, depending on the lens, you know, that perfection, you know, making a true perfect lens also flexible. Um, a perfect prime is uh, certainly one that you can crop, making it an effective zoom. Of course, you are going to have issues in that the compression, you're going to have issues with the lens compression. I mean, that's a given, obviously so. But if you've got a perfect God lens prime, and everybody ought to have, you know, I know everybody's got different budgets, and that's understandable. Excuse me. I'm dying from a cold here and allergies. Everybody's got a budget. I understand that. But ask yourself the question if I'm, it's like, well, what should I buy? I, you know, I ask this question all the time. You said the 20mm 1.8G is perfection, and it damn well is. But I want, you know, buy an 18 to 35 that really lightweight uh, lens for traveling. And, uh, well, here's the question. Well, which do I use? Perfection or flexibility? Well, you have the ability with that 20mm f1.8G to crop it up from 20mm upwards to 30 plus. So you do have that flexibility. Obviously, the compression is going to be different. If you have a nice high megapixel camera, this is another necessity. I mean, if you got a low megapixel camera, a 12 megapixel camera, and the D700 and the D3 are just perfect, I've got them myself, you know, you don't have that flexibility with the Prime. The, uh, the flexibility is lost, even though you have the flexibility in the, uh, in the lens, you don't have that flexibility in the megapixel count. But if you have that perfection, and you have a high megapixel camera, 24 or higher, 24 megapixels or higher, then you have that perfect golden ratio of flexibility with a perfect prime and a high megapixel, meaning 24 or higher, camera, such that you can have perfection with you. So you have a choice between the two lenses, and then you have to ask yourself the question, you know, am I going to be in places where, like I was this weekend, where I can't move backwards because there's people all over the damn place, and in front of me, there's tables and whatnot, so I can't zoom with my feet. 
So the reason I only brought one prime lens is because I needed the zoom lenses. I absolutely, absolutely must have had, must have needed that flexibility. So you have to ask yourself what you're going to be shooting. If you're going to be shooting everything, then you're going to make the choice based upon what it is on your camera you're going to have, 24 megapixels or higher, whatever you have. I'd say if you had a 12 megapixel camera like the Nikon D3 or D700 and you're taking a trip, the choice between the perfect prime and an awesome zoom, I would go with a zoom lens. If you had a 24 megapixel camera or higher, I would, that's me personally, if you're going to be shooting everything and you know all over the place, especially landscape, you can do landscape, get the perfect prime. The perfect uh, prime lens. You know, it's like, I can only afford one lens. People ask me, so I mean, what should I get? The perfect 20 millimeter, for example, f1.8G, or that perfect prime, I mean, that perfect uh, zoom lens. If it's a D700, D3, I'm going to go with the prime. If it's uh, 24 megapixels or uh, higher, um, I'm going to get the prime, actually, excuse me, 12 megapixel. I'm going to go with the flexibility, sorry. I'm dying of a cold here. So... Those are the two criteria you need to think of. What you're going to be shooting, what the megapixel your camera is, and, you know, perfection versus flexibility. You know, well, what about perfect zoom lenses? Well, there aren't any. There are some that are pretty damn awesome. Um, but it is the case that, you know, you know, all things being equal, you got the God lenses, and not all prime lenses are awesome. Just because it's a prime doesn't mean it's awesome. There's a lot of crappy prime lenses. A lot. Um, this is a perfect prime lens. You know, ask me which perfect prime lens you're going to use it for, I'll tell you which is a perfect prime lens. You know, I'll save you that trouble of pissing your time and money away. I'll tell you what the hell is a perfect prime lens depending on what you want to do. Just ask me. Um, yeah, so just because it's prime doesn't mean it's perfect. But... Anyway, I think I made my point clear. I repeat myself. I'm going to blame it on the Benadryl. Either way, I'm glad I could help you. If you like this video, you could send me a uh, <clears throat> a, a hot, pizza, hot pizza with uh, cheese and mushrooms on it. No. <laughs> Thanks so much. Uh, see you later. Oh, God, I'm dying of a cold here. I'm dying. I'm dying.